Have you discovered overemployed yet? These guys promise your best life by helping you earn a couple of salaries at the same time from full-time remote jobs, sometimes even three and four full-time remote jobs. Imagine this, you have a great full-time remote position paying you $100,000 a year. Not bad, right? Now imagine doing the same thing with two jobs making another $100,000 a year. Now you're raking in multiple six-figure incomes and you're not spending it all. So you're cashing the checks, you're putting money into savings, you're paying off debt. It can be a life-changing experience. And I forgot to mention, you're maintaining a reasonable workload. That's overemployed. Let's do this. Hi, I'm Brandon and I've done remote work both full-time and part-time for over a decade at this point. And I've never been overemployed per their definition quite yet. Done something similar to it, but not in the same way. Not saying I'm never gonna do it, but it, I can certainly see the draw of why somebody would want to be overemployed. For your viewing enjoyment, I'm gonna cover five things today. Number one, what is the overemployed community? Number two, how in the world would they do it? Number three, what's the danger involved with overemployment? Number four, is it moral from a Christian perspective? And number five, as a bonus, is overemployment for you? Let's hop into overemployed. According to their website, overemployed.com, overemployed uplifts people's lives by presenting an alternative path to a career. The overemployed puts families before corporations and sustainable earning before overworking. We advocate for living a what life well lived. That's marketing speak for helping people work multiple jobs, put money away, stay sane in the process, and not get fired. If you want to know more about the overemployed world? It is not for the faint at heart. Let's go back. On the sidebar of the website, they actually have the most popular posts. Uh, some of these posts are 12 rules for working two remote jobs. Yes, it's legal to work multiple remote jobs. I, this was interesting. The story of $1.2 million with five IT jobs, you sweet mullet. Um, yeah, that, that's interesting if it's believable. And on and on. In addition to the website, they also have a subreddit. One of the things I like to do over at Reddit is sort by top and then click over there to this month so you see the most popular post in the month. They have over 43,000 members actually and quite a few online even tonight. Um, got this guy starting job number two tomorrow with a couple of computers ready to go. Um, he, uh, this, this guy right here got the fourth job offer saying he's gonna take $800,000. <laughs> By the way, I think some of this stuff is a, is a little hard to believe and probably isn't true, but it is interesting to consider. So just take everything that you read over on the internet with a grain of salt. In addition to their website and subreddit, they have a Discord chat and you can join that as well. So how in the world would you do this overemployment thing? Hmm? I'm glad you asked. The first step in overemployment is to get skills that pay remote workers. So not everybody can do this kind of job. You have to get skills that remote companies or companies that employ remote workers actually pay for. Delivering pizzas ain't gonna cut it. The second thing is to land a high paying, fully remote job. That's right, in order to have two jobs, you first gotta get one job and it needs to be fully remote. We're not talking about one of those jobs that's a hybrid approach where you can be in the office for a couple of times. The best situation, according to these guys, is to get a fully remote job. Third step is to do your job, but keep your expectations low or rather keep your boss's expectations low. You don't wanna jump in there and just do too much and so they expect a bunch of work from you because keep in mind, you're about to land a second full-time job and you wanna maintain those expectations with, with your bosses. Fourth step, don't get fired. It's hard to have two full-time jobs when you're fired from one of them. So you wanna maintain that job as long as possible. 
Here's where it gets interesting, land a second burner job. The second job is where things get interesting because you've now landed your second job with your second paycheck, then you can start banking. Just like your first job, you wanna do the same kinds of things, manage the expectations, keep those at a reasonable level. Uh, also, it may be kind of difficult at the very beginning of your second job, so you may wanna take some time off of your first job so that the second job gets your full attention at the beginning. The sixth step is to manage your schedule, computers, and meetings. While you're holding these two full-time jobs, you wanna probably have a couple of computers set up to do each of the positions, maybe even a couple of phones to maintain the distance and the separation between the two. You do wanna be careful about how you manage your time with that. And the seventh step is don't talk about it with anyone outside your family. They call this the golden rule in overemployment. Don't talk about this with basically anyone. Loose lips sink ships, so said the war board during World War II. You wanna be careful about who you talk about this to. Even if your conscience may allow it, other people may have a hard time thinking through the ramifications of somebody holding two full-time jobs. And that's it, that's overemployment in a nutshell. But what are the dangers? The first danger of overemployment is you could get fired. If you're holding two jobs and the other job finds out about your employment at another job, then they may have a problem with that situation and let you go. You could get fired from any position, not just having two positions, but it is possible, maybe even more likely to get fired if you have two full-time positions at the same time. A second danger to overemployment is you could get sued. That's right, if you actually violated something in your employment contract, uh, the lawyers could be hunting for you afterwards. And I have seen, at least on the website, that in the UK and in Canada, they don't look too kindly in employment law on overemployment. It's not that it's impossible, but it's maybe a little more difficult than in the United States. You wanna make sure that you're talking to an employment lawyer to cross all those T's and dot all those I's. The third danger of overemployment is you could burn out. Yeah, working one full-time job can be kind of stressful. Working two full-time jobs, well, according to these guys, they do it in a certain way so that they don't burn out and they're looking to work no more than 40 hours a week, even with two full-time jobs. By the way, did you know that you could get a bonus from YouTube if you like this video? That is assuming that you do like this video. Uh, what happens is YouTube takes the information that you put, you input your reactions, your comments, your likes, and it will surface more content that is kind of interesting to you right now, like remote work. So if you're interested in more remote work content, it's gonna help surface more of that in your feed. So like the video and let's move on. Another consideration is whether overemployment is moral, at least from a Christian perspective. And I think there's a few things to consider. Number one is you don't wanna break your word. If you don't have your integrity, you don't have anything. And if you have said that you're going to do certain things with the time, during the day, with your job, then you need to do it. You don't wanna break your word. Now, if the employment contract is written in such a way so that you, it doesn't really specify the number of hours that you work, et cetera, then I think there's a possibility that you could stack a couple of those jobs together to do that overemployment thing. But whatever happens, make sure you're not violating something that you already agreed to either in writing or with what you've said. Second consideration, don't violate your conscience. Your conscience is a helpful guide. It tells you whether or not you should be doing something or not doing something. It's not perfect. It can sometimes mislead you. It can be misinformed. But still, you don't want to violate your conscience for the long term. After you've considered it, you've prayed about it, and you've gone, oh, this really isn't for me sort of thing, then you might not want to do this kind of thing long term or at all for that matter. But at least it's something to consider. Does it violate your conscience? The final thing is don't break the law. Laws are in place for a reason, and we don't wanna be on the wrong side of the law, especially when 
your reputation is at stake. So it is something to consider. Don't break the law. Make sure that you've crossed those T's along the way. Finally, the part you've been waiting for is overemployment for you. Are you trying to get ahead financially? Well, this is certainly one way to consider doing it. Adding a couple of full-time incomes on top of each other, especially when you're talking about multiple six-figure incomes, that's one way to get ahead financially. Have you explored other types of income that just don't make sense to you, like uh, building up a side hustle business or holding down a, another part-time job? If those things are not for you, maybe overemployment is. Finally, will your conscience allow this overemployment thing? That goes back to whether it's moral and if you can check those boxes, all three of those boxes, financially trying to get ahead, you've tried other ways of generating some side income and your conscience is going to allow it, well then maybe overemployment is something you want to consider. The quote of the day comes from Psalm 24 verses 3 through 5. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully. He will receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. That's right. As Christians, whatever we end up doing, we want to make sure that we're doing it in line with, with God's ways. And there's a blessing for those who lift up clean hands to the Lord. And personally, that's certainly something that I want to consider whenever I end up doing. Because you could stack up two, three, four, five full-time incomes, but if you're lying and you're cheating and you're basically stealing in the process, then do you really expect God to bless that? If you're interested in remote work, I put a great video together for you on five work at home jobs you can do right now with no experience. So check out that video right there and I will see you in it. All the best.